He is the first fundraiser. Welcome to Southern California, Mr. President, and welcome to a new world. A new poll says fewer and fewer people trust our government, and it just so happens the Democrats are losing support from a certain group of voters. A vacation. Sounds nice, doesn't it? Well, people in one country think it's a human right. They say you deserve to take a vacation, and if you can't pay for it, the taxpayers will. And Betty White gets naked. Mm Mm-hmm. A new hot dog named after the popular actress. No toppings, no enhancements. Just the way she likes it. Naked. All the stories people are talking about and everything you need to know. And chew on right now on The Filter. Hello again on The Filter. Forefront, our top four of the day, including, do you think the government should pay for your vacation? But we'll begin with this. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Of course, most of you won't get to see him. The President is in town for a pair of fundraisers for the Democratic National Committee and the re-election campaign of Barbara Boxer. Cost for a seat at the table, $17,600. While the Democrats are raising money, the people don't trust them or the government. 80% of Americans say they can't trust Washington. They have little faith that the ever-growing federal bureaucracy can solve the nation's ills. Nearly half the people said the government negatively affects their daily lives. Our contributors tonight, Doctor of Social Ethics Charlotte Laws and Emmy Award-winning journalist David Reese. Our pictures are furnished by Scott. And we also are joined by a dog. David? <laughs> I'll begin dog, dog's with not you. here. Not there? <laughs> Charlotte, is that your dog? Oh, uh, yes. That's my do- those are my dogs in the background, yes. <laughs> okay. David, here we go. Mistrust of the government has grown over the past few years. Do you blame the president... And if, in fact, you do, do you blame the Democrats? Do you blame the Republicans? Or do you blame politics and power? I think politics and power, you can't blame any one politician. They're all in this together. And, you know, much as I don't like Sarah Palin too much, she said something so hilarious a little while back at one of her little campaign stops that she made where she said, yeah, how's that hopey, changey stuff working out for you? Yeah, well, that's the problem here is that there has been no change. And that's the problem is this happens to every politician who comes out and makes all these elaborate plans and makes all these big promises and all these grand uh, um, schemes. The problem is they have to actually deliver on them. And I think we're seeing both with the president and right here locally in L.A. with our mayor. You know, they all come out and they make these lofty plans, but they can't seem to ever quite get them done. And I think it's, you know, sadly, I think some of it is uh, idealism on their part. And the other part is that, you know, Americans will we'll buy into anything. Oh, it sounds great. I'm totally in. Yeah, well, you know, what? we need to make our politicians actually deliver the goods. Charlotte, what do you think? Well, I mean, this distrust of government started back in the mid-1960s with Watergate and the Vietnam War, and it's been on the decline ever since. In fact, in 1981, only 25 percent of the people said they trusted government. And the only time that things were different was right after 9-11 when there was all this patriotism. So it's not unusual that we would feel this way. There's also this hyper-partisanship with the two sides, the Democrats and Republicans, fighting all the time. It used to be that you'd go to work as a politician and you'd hang out with the other side and have a beer after work. That doesn't happen so much anymore. And you also have a recession right now. And if you look at the graph, over time with recessions, there's always more of a distrust for government when there's a recession going on. All right, let me jump in. Let me jump in. Let me jump in. We have 15, 20 seconds here. I'll ask you both. You each get five seconds. Given the situation of what you both have said, midterm elections are coming up. Are Democrats going to lose their seats? Charlotte, it's yes or no. Not necessarily. David? Yes. Yeah. I I think it's a tough time. And, you know, when people are unhappy, they're more apt to make a change. What will be interesting to see here in the state of California, and Barbara Boxer is unseated and a Republican replaces her. Okay. Now, according to the Second Amendment, you have the right to carry a gun. But what would you do if you saw someone walking down the street with a gun? Would you run? Would you scream? Would you point? Do you know that they can do that? Yep, the Second Amendment says you have the right to bear arms. In California, you can carry a gun anytime you want, but the weapon must be unloaded. Democratic Assemblywoman Lori Saldana of San Diego wants to change that. She's authored a bill that would ban people from wearing guns openly. Now, according to the law, you can also carry ammunition as long as it's not in the gun. It's been on the book since the 60s. You do need a permit to carry a concealed weapon that is loaded. Saldana does not want to change that. As you can imagine, the NHRA hates this. Law enforcement supports it. Charlotte should well enough be well enough, or is the assemblywoman onto something? 
I think she should leave it alone. There's no emergency. And I, I dislike the idea that this would go through the legislature anyway. I think if you're going to do something, you'd want to have a ballot measure and let the people in the state decide. I, I wouldn't have so much problem with that. But I think it's going to divert uh, police to, you know, putting their effort towards people that don't even have, you know, weapons with, um, with bullets in them. And they could be instead you know, concentrating on much more important crimes. We have well, prisoners wait, being wait, let wait, out of the jails. Wait, 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 I understand that. I understand. And by the way, the Second Amendment says you have the right to bear arms in this state. You can walk around with an unloaded gun, but you're saying police would have other things to worry about. I got to tell you something. If you see somebody walking down the street with a gun, you're going to call the police. You're just not going to think this is okay. If I'm walking down the street with a giant rifle and it's unloaded, how do you know it's unloaded? So, I, you know, I think this causes problems for the police. It is a constitutional right, but I think it does cause problems. David, what do you think? Well, I, I think we're both party to the fact that it causes problems. Anytime you get a, somebody with a report of a gun near a mall, I mean, it, it's like the second coming. I, every cop in 30 miles converges on that mall. You know, so is it, um, is it a good idea to carry a weapon in public? Mm, no, probably not. And uh, but is it legal? Yeah. And, you know, I mean, we're one of the only states, actually, one of just like three or four that actually require that it be unloaded. You walk to, you know, you go to um, Arizona or Oregon, you can walk around with a loaded handgun. There's nothing anyone can do about it. You know, and one of our founding fathers who helped write the Constitution that allows you to carry um, arms in this country also said that he who sacrifices his freedom for security deserves neither. So, you know, I kind of think I'm kind of with Charlotte on this one, surprisingly. I think you should probably just leave this one alone. Not a good idea, but not illegal. Yeah. Hey, what are you going to do? You're going to pistol whip someone. That's pretty much the worst thing that's going to happen. That's like banning the candlestick out of the clue game, because all you're going to do is hit somebody with it. Nothing well, disastrous has happened today, well, wait, wait. so why bring up a new law? Wait, but I mean, if you get pistol whipped, you may not consider it disastrous unless you're the one that just got pistol whipped. Makes sense? Are people we walking hadn't... down your street carrying guns? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the question. If you walk outside of your house and somebody's walking by with a gun, what are you going to say? Hey, neighbor, how are you? Right, but when's the last time you saw someone doing it? I haven't seen that, anyone carrying my, a gun the entire 15 years I've lived in California. Yeah, I've not and, seen it either. But, and, but, but more and more people now, David, are starting to do it. Because this law has been on the books since the 60s. Now we're starting to peop see people act on the law. Yeah, the Tea Party movement. People have been bringing guns and they've been allowed to bring them to some of the rallies. That's true, yeah. Okay, well, you know what? We're all on a different... Well, consider uh, the venue. All right, we're all on a different page there, but... 